Hi, I'm Julie Spencer, author of the Bucks and Peak series. This is Bucks and Peak book one, who is Ian Taylor. And today I'm going to read to you from chapter two. Uh, when we left off after the end of chapter one, um, Megan had just brought Ian to her aunt and uncle's house and they had just had lunch together. So um, they just decided they were gonna go for a walk on the beach. Um, so as chapter two is beginning, it's called Crazy For You. Ian sat in the sand, took off his shoes, and grinned at Megan as he hopped back onto his feet. He had long since removed his suit coat and tie and undone the top two buttons on his white shirt. She half expected him to roll up his pant legs and run into the water, but he just stood there waiting for her to remove her sandals. She hadn't really planned on it, but seeing his excitement, she decided it would be best to just follow his lead. She actually did enjoy the warmth of the late afternoon sand squishing through her toes. The waves lapping against the shore made a relaxing backdrop. He bounced along next to her, arms tucked behind his back as if forcing himself not to get too close to her, and gazed out at the lake like he'd never seen one before. Growing up in Michigan, Megan saw lakes all the time. However, Houghton Lake was quite beautiful. So she tried to see it from his perspective. It sparkled in the late afternoon sunlight as it slowly calmed to an evening lull. The spring was too young for any boats to disrupt the view and anyone still visiting the lake was packing to go home, to go south for another week of mundane work. Very few people actually lived up here. They had the beach to themselves. Although he'd been a gentleman so far, Ian walked close enough for her to feel the warmth emanating from his body. I don't want a boyfriend, I don't want a boyfriend, I don't want a boyfriend. Who was she trying to convince? Megan couldn't help wondering what it would be like to have a man in her life. What it would be like to feel his arm, not close to her, but brushing against her. She felt so defensive, so closed from the idea of intimacy. From the protection of her crossed arms, she dropped her hand. Don't make it too obvious. Would he hold her hand? Was he feeling the spark too, or was it just her imagination? Ian kept his arms securely behind his back. Mortified at having been so brazen, Megan brought her arm or brought her hand back up and tucked it inside the crook of her arm. She wondered if his reluctance to get close to her had anything to do with Ed. The man followed so closely behind them like a third wheel always scanning the horizon as if searching for danger. What's the story with Ed? Megan whispered, not wanting to offend her new friend's traveling companion. He's a little intimidating. She glanced back into the side, hoping to catch a glimpse out of the corner of her eye. Ed noticed her watching him and kind of grunted at her with vitriol in his eyes. Ed's cool. He's got my back. <laughs> I can see that kind of looks like a secret service agent ready to jump in front of a bullet for you. Yeah, Ed glan or excuse me, Ian glanced back at his friend and grinned. He's very protective of me, aren't you, Ed? Ed narrowed his eyes and looked away. I guess I'm going to have to get used to him. Megan turned back to force to face forward again. Definitely, because he follows me everywhere. What are the two of you doing in Houghton Lake? Like I said, just passing through. And you? Don't change the subject. You show up out of nowhere, looking like you belong on the cover of a magazine and acting like you've known me for years. What's your story? Where are you from? Where do you go to school? What are you doing in America? He smiled his crooked grin and admitted that he was doing little more than seeking adventure. I'm from Derbyshire. I'm skipping out on university, and I'm touring the world with my best mates, most of whom are passed out in our motorhome while I fall in love with a girl of my dreams who I met at church of all places. Falling in love, huh? She grinned and tried to look away so he wouldn't notice. You don't even know me. Maybe I should do a Google search on you. He pulled out his cell phone, started typing, but looked up. Megan, how do you spell your strange last name? You are not searching for me on the internet, she laughed, trying to pull the phone away from him. You should search for me then. He grinned, but started typing again. I-A-N-T-A-Y-L-O-R. There, now you can learn all about me. 
He tried to hand the phone over to her, but she pushed it away in protest. I am not going to Facebook stalk you. Why not? Don't you want to get to know the real me? I want to get to know the real you the old-fashioned way, by talking to you. Wouldn't you like to get to know the real me, too? I think I just did get to know the real you. He stopped and turned her to face him. His piercing eyes created an intimacy that made her breathless. She could feel her heart pounding. You're different than any girl I've ever met. And I know this is going to sound corny, but I feel this connection to you. The minute I saw you, I felt, I don't know, I felt something special. Megan didn't want to admit that she felt it too. She took a deep breath and turned back toward her aunt's house. This time, when her arms fell to the side, Ian grabbed her hand unexpectedly and held it casually, as if it were an everyday occurrence rather than the first time he'd touched her. Oh, wow. His hand felt as great as she'd imagined. This is getting complicated. She kept trying to remind herself that she didn't want this in her life right now. She wanted to focus on school for the remaining two semesters. After college, maybe she could find a nice man with whom to settle down and start a family. But she didn't want a vagabond who traveled the world with his friends and shirked responsibility. She wanted a man, not a boy. She wanted someone to raise children with, not a confusing, intriguing mystery boy. She knew it was a little soon to be holding hands, but it felt so good she didn't want to let go. She decided to ignore his assumptions that he was falling in love with her, which was preposterous to say several hours after they'd met, and stay on safer subjects. Did you serve a mission? She felt a little like she was interrogating him. Yes, I was called to Edinburgh, Scotland. Is that far from where you grew up? Only about four and a half hours or so. Pretty close to home, really, compared to where you all serve here in the United States. Did you go on a mission? No, I've been really focused on college. Megan looked up at him. Are you ever going to go to college? I'm not smart enough to go to the university. He pouted a little. Oh, I'm sure you're plenty smart enough. You just have to want to go to college, and obviously you don't. She was surprised to hear Ed chuckle a little. She'd almost forgotten he was there. Ian smiled as well and looked like he was trying not to laugh. They're hiding something. She tried to pull her hand away, but he held it tighter as if to apologize. She couldn't decide if he was a spoiled jerk who would break her heart or a dream barely out of her reach, but she did not want to become hooked on him. Whether he was real or not, he was leaving. He certainly wasn't in any hurry, though. He seemed to be walking slower than before. Sorry, he said. Didn't mean to laugh. Maybe I'll go to university. Someday. Megan pouted for a moment, but slowly relaxed, reminding herself he'd be gone soon. The afternoon was almost over. They walked in companionable silence back toward their shoes and enjoyed looking out at the lake while holding hands. In a way, she felt more comfortable just being with him than finding out things about him that she didn't want to know. They both picked up their shoes and walked back to the house. Opening the side door to her car, he tossed, excuse me, opening the side door to their car, he tossed his sand-covered shoes inside before turning toward her and taking both of her hands. She was afraid to look into his eyes. She didn't want to feel the di disappointment of knowing she'd let her guard down just enough to feel the loss from his absence. Finally, she did look up, and her fear was unfounded. He looked like he was about to walk away from his best friend and had no idea when he'd see her again. Or maybe those were her own thoughts reflected in his eyes. Can I get your number? He whispered. She was surprised by the question because it felt as if they'd known each other for a long time. She softly spoke the numbers, but he didn't even write them down. She shook her head to escape the frustration and let go of his hands, figuring she'd never hear from him again. Oh well, she knew he'd be leaving. He and Ed climbed back in the car and he, she waved lightly as they drove away. I'll miss you already, the text read. Megan looked up at the clock. It had been an hour since Ian and Ed had driven away. Guess he had memorized her phone number after all. Not smart enough for college. Yeah, right. She shook her head and grinned. You're crazy. Crazy for you. Reminds me of a Madonna song from the 80s. You like 80s music? Ian inquired. Not really, she texted back. 
mostly just classical music I can listen to while I'm studying. If I wrote you a love song, will you listen to that? <laughs> Not while I'm studying. She was having fun teasing him. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to write you a love song, then you'll know how crazy I am for you. I'm sure it will confirm just how crazy you are. Megan laughed and hit send. This was getting fun. That's the end of that section. Seriously, how much did you guys have to drink? I leave you for one afternoon and you guys can't control yourselves. I am practically sober, Kai said. He and Ed were holding Gary between the two of them. From the way he was slurring his words, Ian doubted Kai was even close to sober. He just shook his head and walked over to help them get Gary into the bedroom. Ian, I'm so glad to see you. Gary reached over and gave Ian a hug. You're the best brother ever. Did he take something? He looked, Ian looked over at Kai and Ed. Not since I got there, I watched him like a hawk. Ed didn't even crack a smile. At least Ian could always count on Ed to stay sober. It hadn't taken him long to find the guys once they'd gotten to Detroit, but getting them out of the bar and back to the hotel suite was not as easy. Not sure what he did before that. I was a bit distracted, Kai said. His feigned innocence was not disguised by his sheepish expression. I wasn't paying attention to Gary. Was she blonde or brunette? I don't know. They all look alike anymore. Ian just shook his head and sighed before turning back to Gary. Will you tuck me in, Ian? Gary looked up at him with a goofy grin. Just like my mom used to do when I was a little boy. Sure, Gary. Come on. He ushered him over and flopped him down on the bed. Ian pulled Gary's shoes off, but otherwise left him in his jeans and sweatshirt. He pulled a blanket up, and Gary rolled over, snuggling into the pillows. Sleep it off, mate. I love you, Ian. I love you, too. Ian switched off the light and closed the door. He turned to the other guys and realized it was just the three of them. Where are Andy and James? Andy met some babe at the bar, and we made James stay with him so he didn't get himself into too much trouble, Kai said. But Gary really needed to be cut off, so we headed back. I'm glad you did. He was obviously done for the night. From the coherent sentences Kai was able to produce, Ian assumed he wasn't too far gone, thankfully. Ed, why don't you call James and have him drag Andy back here, without the girl this time? I'll go deliver the message personally, Ed said. He grabbed the key card for the hotel suite and shoved it in his pocket. She was quite pretty. He may need some persuading. You know how Andy can be. He's almost as bad as Kai, Ian grinned. Hey, some of us just know how to have a good time. You two losers can wait around till you're 30 if you want to, but don't judge me for having some fun while I'm still young and gorgeous. <laughs> you don't need us to judge you. God will do that for you. Ian reached over and fist bumped Ed before he turned around and to head back out the door. I don't believe in God. Kai said. You want to play for a while before the guys get back? You want me to let you in at Guitar Hero? <laughs> Even if I tried, I could never beat you, Ian. Kai handed Ian a guitar and sat down on the couch. Let's just play for fun. All right, but keep the volume low. I don't want to get in trouble for disturbing the peace again. Will do. Let's jam. <laughs>